Today we are turning this into this vintage inspired beauty. So the shellac has now dried and I'm just going to wipe off the surface for any residual little particles that may have fallen on here. And I have my beautiful new paint color. I think it's called Undersea, but I will confirm that. And I have my purdy brush and a misting bottle so I can use the bottle to wet the surface a little bit to just get this paint moving. Look at what a beautiful color this is. It's a new color I'm trying out, which I made into chalk paint. I just think it would be really pretty for this piece, for this dresser that I'm renovating. It's like a grayish blue. I really, really like it. So I'm just going to apply a first coat, a base coat, making sure to continue to moist, moisten my surface so I can move this paint, light it on, but it doesn't have to be a perfect coat because as usual, I'm paint layering or adding subsequent coats. So the first coat does not have to be perfect, you guys. So I'm going to continue to apply this and I'll be back to show you the next step. So here's a furniture piece with the first coat of paint dried. And as you can see, it looks uh, uh, pretty streaked. But that's okay, it's just our first coat, but I really am loving this color. What I can do now is take some sandpaper, just like a high grit, maybe 400 or 800, and just gently go over the first coat to smooth it out and knock off any little debris that's on there, or just, this is an optional step. If you're doing a textured finish, you don't really have to do this, but, I'm just gonna do it really quickly and that's it. Now I can start applying my second coat. Again, moisten your surface with the misting bottle. And look how pretty the second coat is going to start coming together here. It's really gonna be a lot more solid and the color is going to be more vibrant. Really, really love this beautiful, like bluish gray color. So I'm going to do the entire piece and I'll show you what we're going to do in the next steps. So I'm gonna do some raised stencils on the front of these drawers and I have just some random small stencils, some really pretty florals. And I'm just going to make a little bit of a design over the front of this dresser. So I have my modeling paste. And I have my putty knife. And I'm gonna get some of the modeling paste on my putty knife, position the stencil where I like it. Doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be painted over. It's just going to be an added layer of dimension and style. It's not really going to be a painted stencil look. So it's okay if it's a little bit uneven or messy, it, the paint is going to cover that up. The main thing is just trying to get the pattern of the stencil on there, pour some texture, running my spatula all over where I can get into the pattern of these little flowers. And then I'm just going to skim it back. You really just want it to be almost flush with the level of the stencil. And then we're going to pull it off towards me very carefully and see how pretty that looks. So I'm gonna wash my stencil and I'm gonna continue over this front doing more of these raised stencils. Okay, this is what the dresser looks like with all the raised stencils on. And I know it looks a little funky right now, but you are going to see how beautiful we're gonna work with these. And I'm going to give these some dry time, maybe like an hour, and I'll come back and start painting over them and I'll show you what a pretty technique we're gonna do with these. 
So the next step I'm going to do is begin creating another layer of paint color with this weathered white paint and my purdy brush. It's going to be dry brushing, no moisture involved. And I'm just going to cover the stencils while starting to create a pattern here, a, another dimension of color. And I'm going to show you in the next step why this is important. I'm just going to play with the, the brush here. I'm gonna dab it up and down and just go over the front of this piece, creating some texture. And just dirtying this up a little bit. It's going to be like the white is splattered across the front in random parts. This is part of the design that I've come up with in my head. And though, then I'm gonna come back over it with the with the teal color of paint that I put before on and see what that does together. It's going to hide some of the white, but for now, we're just kind of making some art on the front. That's all it is. So I'm just going to keep doing this all along the front and over the stencils. And I'll be back to show you more. So now the white has dried and I'm going to come back over the surface with the teal color again, using my purdy brush. And because my brush has dried overnight, I might wet it a little bit. And I'm just gonna start playing with this color, going over the white, kind of making things a little bit dirty, a little bit messy, um, hiding some of the white. And depending on how you want this look to be, you can make the white more visible or more subdued. But I like the combination of what's happening here. It's just creating a funky, artistic, even kind of a distressed look. I'm toning down the white blotches, but leaving some of them exposed is going to create some texture and dimension. And of course it's going to add artistic appeal. But see, that's looking really cool. I know it, it, um, it takes some getting used to, but when you finish the details, like I'm probably going to add some metallic wax to bring out the stencils in my last step and then it's all going to come together. It's really gonna look just unique and artistic and rich in character. Now you can dab up and down with your brush or go in circular motions to make it a little bit more smoky. Just play with your paint and your brush. I love what that's doing to the surface to make it look more vintage. I decided to add a little bit more character on the top. I'm going to spray paint some large stencils using this gold spray paint. I'm just putting my stencil over the top and just quickly spraying over the stencil. I'm not too worried about how perfect it is because it's going to go into the background anyway. This is just kind of a detail, like a little bit of glamming up on the top of the dresser. Okay, so I'm going to peel back the stencil and see how it looks. And wow, I really, really love this detail. I love the gold statement it makes on the top and I'm just going to do it in a couple other spots on the top. Now I'm going to do the same thing, the same technique on the top where we have the white and the teal and the spray painted gold stencils. So we are not hiding the entire stencil, but we are disguising it a little bit. You can go as heavy or as light as you want, like I shared before. 
This is a hard technique to teach because really it's up to your own style and preference, how much you want to play with the colors, what colors you want to use, where you position your stencils. It really is unique every time you create it. I oftentimes don't even know what I'm going to make or what the end result will be until I go through it, if that makes sense. But really, this is a lot of fun. This is where I really get a lot of pleasure in doing these renovations is when I get to just see what happens, what comes together, when you start combining colors, textures, layers, and just having fun with it. Okay, so I finished adding the teal to the top and I wanna try one more thing because I'm not fully convinced with the look on the top yet. I think it looks a little bit too messy. When things look too messy and you're going for an artistic look, one thing I do is I make it intentional, is I make it even messier by adding more layers. So this is the idea I have, it just came to me, is to roll on with this foam roller, mini roller, some uh, light gray paint. This is called Foggy London. It's like a creamy gray paint. This is really dry, so I'm gonna spray it a little bit, not too much, you don't want it soaked. And I'm going to see what this does because usually this will add a really cool look. I can always paint back over everything if I need to, but let's just see. I'm gonna go this way. And now I'm gonna go this way. Try to just get some texture going. I'm not worried about this covering up this, the layers below. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna reveal that a little bit. Right now, I'm just looking at getting some cohesiveness with this other layer of gray, but also keeping things just kind of artistic. Okay, so we've got this on now. I'm gonna keep pushing down, applying pressure. Now, to thin this out, we're gonna spray it with water. Get some paper towels bundled up, wipe it back. So now a whole new look is coming together. I like working with paper towels and water because it'll kind of just really make everything blended, but also really kind of smoky and aged. And it starts revealing some of the layers underneath. So this is really cool really like this look. I'm going to continue doing this all over the top. And if I really like it, I might do it all over the front. Just bear with me because pieces have, furniture pieces have a mind of their own and they take me in all sorts of really cool directions. This is even better than what I started out with. I really like how the stencil is kind of nestled into the background and you have a lot of texture and you have this smoky kind of cloudy look with a lot of tone and a lot of color coming through also. I'll be back to show you more. Okay guys, so I am back and this foggy London gray paint that I put over the surface with this really cool rolling technique and with the paper towels is looking fabulous. I really, really do like that I added that final step. Now to finish off the aesthetic here, I am going to use some metallic waxes to highlight some of the details and just to add a decorative finish. So I have a few colors here. I have antique gold, autumn gold, and this new wax that I got called Peacock, which I think is a really pretty turquoise, will, which I will play with. So I'm just going to start with the antique gold and what these waxes are going to do 
or just accentuate the details and add a little bit more character and artistic appeal. So I'm gonna go parallel over the stenciled area and see how it really pulls out the details of the stencil, this gold color. I'm not doing all of it, just in a few spaces. And I'll also maybe go along the edge of this outline of the drawer, maybe in some parts over the texture. Really, you're just creating whatever look you want here. I just wouldn't go overboard is my suggestion. I would just do like subtle details. But look how fabulous it works over the stencil. It just brings out these little florals and all their details that have been kind of hiding in the background of the paint. And it also adds a little bit of a glimmer, a little bit of glam, which is a beautiful contrast for this rustic piece that we've created. Now let's try this peacock color and see what that looks like. Look how pretty that is. I just put a little bit on my finger and the same thing, just going to go parallel. So I see already this one is very strong. You don't want to put too much on it. You want to put a little bit on your finger and just slide it because we're not smudging a whole bunch of this color on there. It's just supposed to be a detail. And I like the way it looks over this kind of teal color of paint. It's giving it a whole nother uh, dimension and a little bit of sheen. Look how pretty that is. So I'm going to continue working on this and I will be back to show you the final steps. I have finished putting on all the metallic waxes and I have thought about this overnight because I am actually not loving how the orange combines with this darker teal that is looking more bluish now. And I'm, I'm just not so convinced with it yet. So I am going to do another step and just add a mint green layer on top and see what that does. For some reason, I got the idea of mint green. So I'm going to just dry brush some of this green balsam chalked paint and we'll see what that does. Again, it's just kind of working with the furniture piece and going in the direction that speaks to you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of paint, just a little bit on my brush, and I'm going to go parallel over the surface and pull down and start just toning this down and seeing what this other layer of mint does. I like how it's pulling out some texture already while toning down these waxes. Sometimes you don't know how things will come together until you go through the steps, but that's part of art, right? And I'm never discouraged. I always see it as an opportunity to keep going and create something even better. I'm gonna do some on this side and already I do like what's happening. I'm not taking away completely all the wax just yet. I'm gonna go in steps and that's what I suggest when you're trying to course correct is just go in increments. So I really, I actually really like what the mint green is doing here, how it's complementing everything and it's, um, I don't know, making things a little bit more distressed, a little bit more farmhousey or cottage-like, which is totally my style. So anytime you paint layer, you're going to add more character. So I'm going to keep doing this all over the, the piece and I'm going to see if I like it. So I am really happy with the mint green over the finish. I think it looks much better. It's more distressed and everything is more toned down. I really like this look. What I'm going to do is finish off with a little bit of brown glaze 
just to add a little bit to the distressed look in very, very minimal detail. I just took some glaze, clear glaze, and I put some brown paint in there and I mixed it up. And I'm just gonna go along with this painter's, fine painter's brush and just, just add a little bit of detail along edges. So it kind of adds a little bit of a distressed character. This is an optional step, but it just adds a little hint of contrast and just a look of additional weathering. So I'm going to continue to work on this and I'll come back to show you the final details. Hi guys, before I share with you the final reveal, I wanted to share some exciting news. I am launching my first in-depth furniture renovation course. This is nothing like I have out there on YouTube. It is start to finish with my best tips and tricks that I have learned over the years. Head to my blog at nooksandbloom.com to sign up today. <laughs> Getting deep now, what is getting deep now?